how do you avoid being codependent? Yeah, that's a that's a crazy ass dance. It's a dance, man. It it really is. A part of it is facing off with our programming. Right? Again, I already spoke to this earlier, but if I understand that my whole life has been set up to figure out what you need and want, mommy and daddy, so that I can feel safe to therefore go be who I am, then that over time, let's call it 10 to 15 to 16 years of my life was set up that way. You think I'm going to come out of 16 years of programming and conditioning and go into a new relationship and not have that same setup? It's 100% going to be there. So the first step is to go, oh my God, look what I'm coming out of. Can you help me, new partner? Can you help me untangle and unweave and cut the cords of codependence? while simultaneously understanding that we're connected, right? I'm going to get vulgar here for a moment, but if you are in a relationship with somebody mm. and you go fuck somebody else and come back and give them a disease, you're fu- you're responsible for that, right? Not that that's ever going to happen, but the mm. point is, is like I can poison the well of my partner by my dumbass choices, mm. right? So a lot of things need to happen. One, Anybody going into any relationship where you understand that you're super connected and that codependence is possible, you have to talk about it. You two have to talk about it. Hey, um, you know, uh, and I'll give you a raw, vulnerable shit from my marriage where we, mm. we almost ended it, bro. Two years ago, we were almost, we were at the brink of divorce. And a part of it was, a big part of it was my stuff. Where I learned as a little boy that if I had checked all the boxes for my mom, that then I can go outside and go be me. So I'll check the boxes at home and I'll be me outside, right? Just even that thinking is already off as a child. Well, my idea of relationship was I'll check all the boxes and I'll be a good husband and I'll cook, and or I wouldn't cook, but I would clean, um, wake up a hundred times a night with the kids, be a super dad, super everything. And anytime she complained about something, one, I took it super personal. Two, I'd go and be even more. So I was doing a lot. But where I was doing the dishes from, where I was helping the kids from, where I was, you know, being the superhero and trying to provide and do all the stuff from was lack and scarcity. And so she never really got her man. She didn't get me. She got the wounded little boy, the nine-year-old in a man's body. How were you doing it from lack and scarcity? Because I wanted her to approve of me. I wanted her to say, good boy. I needed her to validate the same way that my mom was. So we weren't even in a relationship. She wasn't in a relationship with me. She was in a relationship with a nine-year-old little boy who was still trying to get the pat on the head from his mom. That's so not, not, so that's not, not a man. Yeah. That's a boy, right? The man says, I'm gonna wash these dishes because this is my house, and today, I need you to do it. The man says, hey, he, these are my requests. And here, catch this. this is, it, take it even deeper. My wife, who's amazing, did not grow up in a household that was touchy-feely, lovey-dovey. I did. So I wanted her to kiss on me and love on me and hug me and jump in my lap and do all these things And the way I was trying to get that done was I'll do more chores. I'll fold the laundry. I'll do this. I'll make a bunch of money. I'll be the super dad waking up in the middle of the night a hundred times a night. I'll go with no sleep. Just please, at some point, figure out, psychically understand that I need you to come do these things. That was a recipe for disaster. And it created so much resentment in me and her, because she was never in a relationship with the, with the conscious man. She was never in a relationship with my power. She was in, in a relationship with, with a construct, a social construct that was born out of pain from childhood. So now, right? Now, this is two years ago. We almost got divorced. 
after that two years and all of this stuff came up and we had a huge explosion, we started fighting all the time. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We were fighting because I was no longer willing to hide my request. Because in relationships, you have requests and you have requirements. I was no longer willing to hide or push those to the back. I now was willing to share, these are my needs. Mm. This is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I like. I stopped hiding me like I was as a child. Remember I told you that? Yeah. Right? Mommy's home. Good boy. Get outside. Real me. Now I'm collapsing those. Real me in the house. So we fought a lot. But the more we fought, the sexier I became to her. The more we fought, the more polarity. The more we fought, the more sex, the more love, the more juice, the more clarity. She could, she could, she could land on that. That's man right there, right? I became a pillar, mm. something inspirational, something scary in a good way. Now we don't even fight, but I'm still there. So the solution's fight, you know what I'm playing? At some level <laughs> at it some is. <laughs> at some level it is. It depends on how you fight. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. But so, but how do you how do you turn that? So I get that, you know. But how how do you turn that fighting into something more productive? So, so like, mm-hmm. is it's did, did you guys just let your frustrations out and yes. finally come to yes an understanding? And then also, who is the real you? Yes, that you are hiding. I was figuring it out. I was figuring it out on on the job. I didn't know because I wore the mask so long. Right, I was figuring it out. And the beautiful thing, because here's the thing, right? People go, like for me, I used to go to Burning Man. I went to Burning Man 12 times, 12 years. Oh, wow. And why I loved Burning Man, because it's one place where there was no expectations. The weirder you were, the better. The crazier you are, the better. The more free and open and expressed you are, the better. So Burning Man, to me, equated freedom. When I'm here, free. When I'm home, you got to do the thing. Stay in the box, right? You're a big-ass black dude. Everybody's scared of you. X, Y, and Z, got to be safe, got to be this, got to be that, mm. right? Okay, when I'm here, fucking no hose bar, right? So the work, again, is to collapse those, to make Burning Man be home, right? And so, okay, well, I'll figure it out. And I want to say something. You said, how do you make it productive? It assumes that fighting isn't productive. It's one of the most productive things you could do is be honest about where you are. Fighting doesn't mean yelling. It doesn't have to. It could just mean Hey, we disagree on this. At least that person knows. You know why people hate when people ghost? Because they just want to know. Just tell me, bro. You don't want to date me? Fuck, tell me. You found somebody else? Tell me. But don't be a little bitch and run. That's the thing that pisses people off about ghosting. And it's the same thing that pisses women off and men off in relationships. Is we have this unspoken resentment where you don't know how to get to this person because they're not actually speaking their truth. 